It does my heart good to see that this is so well cared for. Even with her feet planted firmly in the present. This is grave 190. This is uh, Charles Harden of New Jersey. Linda Cook. Enoch Norris of New York. Feels the constant pull of the past. O.A. Andrews, Michigan Volunteers. You'll often find the woman from Charles City County. They're, they're from uh, all across the country. Exploring historic cemeteries and battlefields. We're at Malvern Hill. This is the uh, Union line of artillery. Landmarks practically right outside of her back door. For me, it makes it real. It makes it alive. When Linda is not studying landscapes in person. This is the battle map. She pours over manuscripts and memoirs from another era. It's even better than reading a good novel. The history buff's favorite subject? I love it. I absolutely love it. Civil War clashes, which raged near her home. Battle cry of freedom. Various research materials. The professional title examiner possesses a detective's knack for discovering the smallest of details. This is where you get the side stories, the human life stories. Recently, while researching the 1864 Battle of Jones Bridge. It was right here, right here on the ground we're walking on. Linda uncovers a mistake that for decades haunted a family from the Midwest. The battles were intense. The casualties were just unbelievable. During the fighting, a private named Uriah Scott would eventually meet his fate. It was the 28th Indiana United States Colored Troops, uh, USCT. The Union soldier was buried on a nearby farm more than 600 miles from home. He, he was wounded June the 23rd. He died June the 25th, 1864. Uriah was just 16 years of age. It just pulls at your heartstrings that somebody that young was involved in that conflict and gave his life. Linda says what happened years after the young soldier's death made the episode even more heartbreaking. She was one of so many, so many mothers. Linda uncovers letters from Uriah's mother, Sarah, who never knew what became of her youngest of three sons who served. In looking at her inquiries to the War Department and just being a mother myself, I can imagine if I had a lost child and I did not know where to look, it would be agony for me. When Linda visited Glendale National Cemetery, her heart sinks further. The soldier is misidentified. At Uriah's gravesite, the name engraved on his granite marker is wrong. I have looked at the muster records. There was no Robert Scott ever. The amateur historian has documents backing her findings. I personally am 100% convinced. I invite anybody to look at the records and I think you'll come to the same conclusion. Linda doesn't fault the crews who shouldered the responsibility of collecting and reburying tens of thousands of soldiers following the Civil War. Unbelievable task. Unbelievable. The fact that we have any of it right is remarkable. Now the researcher is embarking on a 21st century mission to right a 19th century wrong. The Veterans Administration acknowledges this is the grave of Uriah. She is urging the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs, which oversees national cemeteries, to update or replace Uriah's marker. All of the Civil War graves are reinterments. Her repeated inquiries haven't been answered, but she remains undeterred. I can't let it rest. I've, I've got it. I feel compelled to take the steps. Linda is driven by the thought of a fallen soldier and the family he left behind. Her story, Uriah's story, is worth remembering. They're real people with real lives, real stories. Linda Cook, a researcher. I'd like to see that corrected. And that has just become a burning passion with me. Determined to literally rewrite history etched in stone. It is just uh, correcting 
an error that needs correcting. All in the name of a soldier who will forever be 16 years old. I think it's a, it's a small thing that we could do to acknowledge all that he gave at such a young age. For I have a story. As long as it takes, yeah, as long as it takes. I'm Greg McQuaid. I owe that to his mother. CBS 6 News.